Weekly progress meetings help make it possible to stay on top of your plans, liaise with other team members, and generally keep your projects on track. And having these meetings regularly would make it less likely that smaller issues will amount to more costly problems and delays on the critical path. If you're responsible for these meetings, then it helps to have a clear process in place. Hi, I'm Joe from Apex, the construction scheduling software that helps delivery teams quickly build their short-term plans. In this video, we're gonna be talking through the general structure of a weekly progress meeting and a few best practices. You'll get the most out of it if you stick around for the whole thing, but if you wanna skip ahead or come back to recap on something, then you can do so using the timestamp bar at the bottom of the screen. Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. The more those numbers go up, the more we get to keep making videos like this. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the typical structure of a weekly progress meeting. Step one, attendance. Taking attendance helps you keep track of who knows what and make sure everybody is aware of the latest plans. It's also helpful to know who was and wasn't in the room when sending out meeting minutes. Step two, review the previous week's performance and failed tasks. Reviewing the previous week's performance is a crucial part of your weekly progress meeting. It helps to discuss what went well, what didn't, and most importantly, what can be done better in the future. If you're manually collecting data, then this is a great time to discuss KPIs and look for potential issues. Step three, review this week's plans and highlight critical activities. After reviewing the previous week's performance, it's time to start looking ahead. This is a good opportunity to highlight any critical or high priority tasks so that the wider team can plan accordingly. This is also a good time for teams working in the vicinity of other works to highlight and discuss any potential clashes that they need to be aware of. Step four, review potential blockers and designate actions to mitigate issues. No project ever goes 100% smoothly. And when building and reviewing your plans, you're bound to come up against blockers and potential issues that need to be addressed. As with everything in construction, communication is crucial here. You want to prevent delays from happening before it's too late. And the best way of doing that is to make sure that every concern raised is designated to the right person. Step five, coordinate between teams and trades. Take a moment for different teams and trades to coordinate between themselves. Focus on locking in what areas of site are being used by who and for what. This will help avoid any potential clashes. Step six, set targets and make promises. You've reviewed the previous work's performance and made plans for the week ahead. The only thing left to do is to set targets and have the delivery team make promises on the work that they are responsible for. In many cases, it's better to have the delivery team that are undertaking the work set their own targets and take ownership of the plans. This often ensures buy-in from the teams and can help drive site performance. Now, if you get those six steps right, you'll be on the path to a successful progress meeting. But as with most things, there's always room for improvement. If you're looking to get the most out of your weekly progress meetings, then there are a few easy wins. Think about your equipment and facilities. The smallest things can make a difference. Do you have enough seats? Are there drinks, snacks, stationery? Are you using the best available tech? We've also found that having an agenda and making sure everyone has a copy of it before the meeting takes place helps keep everyone on track. Then, throughout the meeting, make sure that somebody takes minutes. These can later be sent round to anybody who needs to take action on the things discussed. Last but not least, make sure you're using the right software, as this can help save you from time-intensive tasks and help keep the project on track. Apex, for example, can help build your short-term schedules and track critical data but you should also consider things like site diaries and attendance software. If you need inspiration, then check out our video on the eight construction management tools every engineer should know in 2023. We'll leave a link in the description below. And that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to, to uh, too much energy. That was a bit hard on the air. <laughs> oh.